Schneiderman, and this is Conversations on Creating to Heal. And today I'm really delighted to be speaking with Brianna Jordan from Denton, Texas. She's a dance major at the University of North Texas, as well as an actress and producer. And her story is one of healing and helping others heal after sexual abuse. So welcome, Brianna. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. So you wear a couple of hats. I, I had said you're a dance major, producer, actress. Uh, do you sort of have one central mission for the kind of art that you're doing? Um, my central mission is basically to be a performer. I don't really consider myself just a dancer or just an actress. I, I really enjoy both. So I like to performing in all aspects, like on a stage or in front of a camera that um, I've learned and progressed into that mindset. Wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Well, let's talk about your story. So I said that yours is one of a journey of healing and helping others heal uh, after abuse. So talk a little bit about how this started and uh, how you ended up uh, processing it. I have not personally been sexually assaulted, but a good friend of mine was and um, about a year or so ago. And it really, it really bothered me because I could see how much it affected her. I could literally, I could see her pain. And she used to be like, she was very um, vocal and she was just very fun. And she, she had a really big personality, but so to see her go so dark in a way, she, she went very into herself. And she also had outbursts um, of, you know, um, aggression or anger. And then she even threatened to harm herself. And so, when I found out what happened to her, it really, it really bothered me because you hear stories of sexual assault, but you, it doesn't really hit home until it actually happens to someone that you know. And so I wanted to help her. And even though I couldn't change what happened to her, I did want to bring awareness to her story and to others. And so that's where um, the short film Kadupal came into play. And the main point of it was to, for people to understand that if they use what they're passionate about, their love, whether it's writing or photography or acting, dancing, anything, they can begin to heal themselves because what you love is, what I really feel like is what you love brings that core of yourself back to what it used to be. And mm -hmm. so I wanted, I wanted her and other people to understand that because she's a very good friend of mine. She, she's such a fun personality. She, um, she, she takes, because she's had to deal with a lot in her life, so she takes things and turns a humorous twist on it, and, you know, so it's not as bad of a situation, and so, and she always checks up on me, and she makes sure if I'm doing okay, and even when she's not doing so well herself, and so it really, that, I, that shouldn't happen to anyone, but it really bothered me that that happened to her. Yeah, well, what, a, you know, not only uh, does that speak to friendship, but that also speaks so much to your transformation, right? So much mm -hmm. about how we feel helpless when something happens to somebody close yeah. or even to ourselves sometimes. It's that feeling, a uh, lack of control, mm -hmm. and how neat, you know, that you were trying to create something to raise awareness and have an impact. So I imagine that having to process uh, what your friends were going through and this, you know, difficulty, this lack of control, this feeling of helplessness, that must have been really hard on you. So, you know, what was it that you turned to, to help you process? I turned to um, <clears throat> um, my own personal passion, which was acting. And I decided to, to with, um, with the help of Michelle Cornwell Jordan, I, I, decided to we decided to create a short film called Kadoople and I think the reason why is because we chose that medium of art is because it's visual and the there are people are actually moving and and embodying these types of situations and like it really brings to mind how real it all is so people can actually understand and hear why why it causes so much pain. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It, it is a good medium, you know, to really uh, connect with the viewer. Mm -hmm. And what is the plan? Do you have a plan for this film? The plan is just to uh, 
Um, it's on, it's for people to watch it, basically. Uh, it's on Amazon, they can watch it there. Or, and mainly to put it in film festivals. So that way we can just get the word out and let people, it just basically inspire people and make them feel better. That's the whole real goal of it. And also it's, it's attached to this community called RAIN, R-A-I-N-N, and it's the largest anti-sexual violent group. And we would really like it for people to be more aware of that because it is such a big group. It's, it, people really need to get that out there, bring attention to it, and so people know it's there because this is such a, an intense topic that I don't think anybody really knows there's people out there helping them and fighting for them. So RAIN, their group, is really important in this too. Yeah, it sounds like also just giving a voice, you know, so, some yes. in some way for the voiceless, because this is a hard topic for people to want to uh, own up to, that mm -hmm. they've been through this. So <laughs> having a community where they can go to, where they're not feeling that they're alone and that they have that, you know, community is, is great. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So talk a little bit about, uh, could you pronounce it for me, Kadupal? Kadupal. Kadupal, what does that mean, and how did you, how did that come to be? Kadupal is actually a flower, and it blooms only for one year, or, and it dies the next morning. So, it's, um, that meaning where I, to be honest, forgive me, we, we discussed this so many times, there's so many different takes on it, but I believe the main take would be some, um, the thing that happened, it happened at night and it caused her, the, the character Clarissa Bloom, to not die, but like, you know, for her, that part of her to kind of die, you know what I'm saying? So I, she was using dance to bring that part of herself back to life. Kadupal is basically, it's about a college freshman. Um, well, she's a sophomore, but she was sexually assaulted in her freshman year. And she suffered, um, it was such a traumatic event that she suffers now from transient amnesia. Basically, she forgets things every 15 minutes. And so her friends and her family, they're all really concerned about her, but she's on a time clock, basically, because it happened, it, uh, six months has gone by. And so if she's not showing any actual sign of getting better, they will remove her from her college and make her go back home. And so because it's such a intense uh, timeline, they're having to really use what she could, they're having to use her dance because that's the only thing she truly remembers past that, that the event, what happened to her. And so. So she's not, processing what she went through by, through mm -hmm. dance. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, because um, she only responds to dance because uh, anybody else like her, like we see her friends handing her pictures of themselves so they can, so she can remember them, but she doesn't unless she has those pictures. She doesn't really after a while, but she does remember, like, like I said, she remembers dance, she remembers that feeling and that's how she connects with it. And so they all take turns to dance with her actually. Um, and it's really cool. They all take turns to dance with her. And that helps her really slowly understand she's not alone. They really thought counseling all those months would help. I mean, it did. She's still Clarissa. Clarissa? No. Clarissa. No, no, no. It's okay. No, Clarissa. Her mom said the doctors hoped that being back where she loved and doing what she loved would bring her back. Dance. That's what it feels like to have anyone, especially a guy, touch me. Do you understand that all of this is because of you? If you had to introduce her to that dumbass- I told you I never thought Josh would do something like this. There's a flower called Kadupo. It blooms for one night. In the morning, it dies, but for that one night, the world has its fragile beauty to enjoy before the dawn brings its destruction. This is proof. There's beauty in darkness, in hope, in brokenness. What 
kind of impact have you had from sharing this film? Sharing this film, um, <clears throat> actually it really, the people involved specifically with the film, it did help them because they had stories like that, um, similar, like they've either experienced it or they had someone they knew experiences. So it really helped them and, and um, it meant a lot to them, you know, to see something like this. And they had, they gave a lot of in input. They explained exactly what they went through and exactly where their mind was at. So we, they, we were able to incorporate that into the film. For you, was this film, you involved people who had gone through abuse and, and took their stories or, you know, parts of that? It was honestly unintentional because we didn't know they were going through it until they actually mentioned it to us. And so um, one of them, she, she lent us her studio and she explained what happened to her. And so I really wanted to portray this properly for her. She's the one who gave the, the input of how it's a journey of healing and how it's a steady pace and it doesn't just come happen overnight. And so she, um, she really did gave realistic proportions for it. Nice. Yeah. Well, right now, I just want to invite you to share a little piece of this film with us and you can share something and talk about it, you know, and what, tell us a little bit about why that's meaningful. It was, um, uh, to share the part of the film for me, it would be playing the character um, because, because like I said, I have not personally gone through it. So in, to act, to, to, to play that kind of person, it was really, um, it was very surreal, honestly. It was very interesting because I had to uh, shy away from certain people. I, I had to act like I didn't remember someone. And it was, it was very interesting because I played Clarissa Bloom. I was the main actress. And so I really felt like I had a weight on my shoulder to really get this story across. I imagine that it's been a journey for you to embody a character, uh, live vicariously, you know, through this character and really get in touch with those feelings, um, all of those feelings, even the really difficult ones. So what kind of lessons, life lessons, you know, might you want to share with others who might be going through something similar? A life lesson I would say would be to not let what happened to find you because that can really eat at a person and, and it can really make them go down a very dark path. And so if they just, like I said earlier, mentioned earlier, take their passions and the support from family and friends, they can begin to heal themselves. But I would highly suggest not letting that define them. Mm -hmm. I like that. Don't let the uh, experience define who you are. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And You're thank welcome. you so much for coming on to Conversations on Creating to Heal. Thank, thank you for having me. This was really nice.